Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to test out the C-Star uh, S50 solar function. Now obviously the first thing we're going to check is the connection. So let's get it turned on now and then uh, connect it to our app. Okay, it is now connected. So the first thing that we're going to do obviously is the scenery mode. Uh, just to get the lens up far enough for us to put the filter on. So let's move this up here. And once that is up far enough, all we have to do is we clip this solar filter on. Like so. We go to our solar uh, function in the app. Install it and go to. And what this is going to do is it will automatically find the sun, which is something that, uh, as far as I've seen, no other... Uh, telescope has been able to do so far on its own in regards to digital telescopes. I, I do think it's quite cool that it is able to find it by itself. You know, you don't have to put in any coordinates, you don't have to calibrate it or anything, it will automatically go to. So that's very impressive in my opinion. I'll allow it to find that. Oh, we passed it. All right, neat. So it automatically does center it. Um, I do have a tree in the way, so let me move it somewhat over to the side. Just like that. All right, we're going to do another go-to. Solar, installed and go-to. Okay, it is now centered. So what we're gonna check is if it's autofocus. Let's autofocus that. Okay, autofocus is completed. So we're gonna switch it to video, keep it on raw data, and we're gonna let this run for about the 10 minutes that it shows here on the app. And then we're gonna take it inside and process the data that we get from that. Alright, so here we are now on PC. As you can see, we've already transferred our solar folder from the CSTAR S50 file database into uh, our PC. Uh, we have the stacked JPG by uh, CSTAR. It's very blurry, honestly. Uh, then we have the solar.avi file. I'm sure that you noticed that while it was filming, uh, we had the sun go outside of the image. So I guess that means that it wasn't tracking properly. Uh, maybe maybe we had a little issue or hiccup with that, but we still got a workable amount of video, I believe. Uh, so first things first, we're going to be using pre, sorry, Planetary Imaging Preprocessor, the program. Uh, those of you who are confused on how to download it, uh, when I went to go download it, the actual .exe file download link was down, so you just need to download the uh, the zip file and uh, extract it with that. So. Uh, it's, let's go ahead and open that. We're going to do our file, add source files, and we're going to go to our, let's see, solar. Where is it at? There it is. Solar. We're going to do AVI, open. AVI file with a Bayer pattern RGGBA has been added. Do you want to enable the better? Yes. Okay, let's just add that in. As you can see, the sun is the wrong color. So uh, what you want to do for that is we're going to go to our processing options, uh, we're going to look for our Bayer pattern. Let's check that here. Where is it at? Okay, there it is. RGGB. And we're going to look at these and see test options. Okay, so first you start, the D Bayer pattern should, prop, should actually be BGGR. Uh, that's the correct D Bayer pattern to get the proper, you know, orange color. If you for some reason decide that you want an off-color sun, you know, be my guest, you can use whatever one you want, but uh, the proper one is 
the GGR for the C-Star. Now this is going to vary in regards to each different camera because each camera is going to have its own bear pattern. But for this uh, C-Star S50, it's BGGR. Uh, so let's do our processing. Uh, let's see, output options. Uh, let's see, output format. We're going to set it as TIFF. Yes, I'm going to set that as TIFF. Okay. Uh, and we're going to do our processing. Let's see. Processing 6,949 frames. And I'll start processing now. Now, this might actually take a while. Uh, honestly, quite understandable that it would take this long as it has to basically take apart the video, uh, decide which files are best, and kind of sort through everything just so we can get uh, the best image possible when we take it into the auto stacker program. So we're going to allow us to do this and we will come back to when that is complete and we will take our files into the auto, auto stacker program afterwards. Okay, so processing is now complete. It automatically opened this up. Uh, so let's check this. And here are all of our TIFF files. You can see it all the way to the point even that it uh, gets rid of our sun. So let's take this into auto stacker. Honestly, I feel like auto stacker is even more confusing than pre-planetary. Pre uh, I, can't, I can't see the name of this program, right? Planetary imaging pre-processing. That's what it is. Okay. Uh, so let me go ahead and open that. I have that here. Let me, it's in my downloads. Because it's auto stackered and it was a zip file, we have to open it through here. Uh, this link doesn't work. You have to open it with all the other files. Otherwise, this will happen. So open it just like this. Okay, it is open. So uh, first things first, obviously, we're going to do our open button. We are going to go to libraries. No, desktop. There we go. Let's find our solar files. It's right here. No items about your search. We're going to switch this to all image files. There we go. And we're just going to select all of these to insert into the program. All right, so we have the majority of these selected. I'm going to stop at 4,440 images and hit open. And here is our sun. Obviously, it is not stacked yet. This is just a one uh, a single frame. So there's several things that we're going to have to make sure we have turned on in here. Obviously, we need to make sure we have improved tracking on here. Make sure that you have your image stabilization on for surface instead of planet because we are not doing a planet. If you do are going to do a planet, make sure you do planet. But for this video, we're doing surface. So have it on surface. Make sure you have late place turned on. Uh, leave the normal range on local. Uh, we can analyze these frames, which will take just about a minute. And you, what that's going to do is it's going to see which of these frames are good and which of these frames are bad so that we can really sort out the bad ones, uh, avoid having a bad image with that. So let's go ahead and allow that to analyze. Uh, and again, we'll come back to once that's complete. Okay, so that has now completed. And here is our quality graph. What we can do here is you make sure that this line, this green line here, does not pass below 50. We basically just don't want this green line to pass below uh, the middle here. Uh, so let's set this to this. You know, just give it barely enough, you know, just enough uh, for it to uh, not be below that. Uh, let's go back to here. Uh, and then we will set this. As you see, the number of frames that we have to stack is going to be 4,268, which is shown here on this screen. So we insert that here, 4,268. And you can set it as either TIFF, PNG, or FITS file. If you want to do uh, further processing, you would use TIFF or FIT. Uh, for this, we're just going to set it as PNG because I do not plan on doing extra processing with this. Now, the frame percentage to stack is it will give you four different folders uh, with four different options that you could choose from uh, in regards to the amount of frames stacked in regard like when it comes to quality uh, this one will choose all of them uh, you can set these at different amounts like maybe 80 80 percent of frames for the first one i'm going to set it at as all of the frames next 75 best next 50 best and next 10 best uh, then we will just leave all these things on rgb align uh, sharpened blend raw for 50 percent just leave that alone uh, save it in folders yes uh, i'm gonna have it as set as the sun just so i know for the future you know that this is going to be the name of the stacks you know 
uh, for that in the future, if I want to go back to it, I can know what I'm looking at, which now that I think about it, it should be pretty obvious. You know, if I click on the image, it's a picture of the sun. So, uh, yeah, it should be pretty obvious. Uh, then there's drizzle. You can either have that off or if you want a bigger image, it's 1.5x or 3.0x. Uh, for this one, I'm going to set it at 3.0. Uh, just to see how good of an image I can get with that. Now, after that, before you can even press the stack button, you have to move over to the screen. Just drag this over. And we're going to do place AP grid. It's going to select all these parts of the sun, just like that. You can scroll down just to look at it. It will select all these points of the sun as a reference point to know exactly where it's stacking to get an accurate stack. After you do that, that is when you could press the stack button. And this is going to take forever. So press the stack button. And it will start the stacking process. Uh, I'm not even going to bother trying to record this part because this is going to take forever to go through. I, I've done it once before and it took about 30 minutes to finish. So we're, again, we're going to let this run and we will come back to when that is complete. Okay, so the stacking has finally finished. Uh, as you can see, just a moment ago, my battery is almost dead. That's how long this took. And honestly, it did put a big strain on my computer. You could hear the, the fans blowing. This is a brand new computer, uh, so it shouldn't really have issues like that. But okay, we finished stacking all four different files. Uh, all 4,268 frames were stacked. So let's go ahead and open that now and take a look at them. So desktop in our solar filter. It's in our PIPP folder. And here's the different ones. There's the 10% of images. That's, no, okay. There's this one. You can see we got all 10% of our images stacked. You can see a lot of the detail here in the chronosphere, uh, the extra lighting at small sunspots that are starting to form, as well as the very dark sunspots here. Uh, let's check out the next one. 50%, open that up, allow that to load in because it is a lot of data. Here's this one, this one's very nice, you can see a lot more detail in it honestly. I do feel like the edge is a bit more blurred as it moves that way, unfortunately you can't really see as much here. Um, but you can see the surface of the sun, the little splotches, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, Let's go to the 100% one. Let's check this out. So here's 100%, all of the images stacked. Uh, I, I, I'm honestly blown away by the amount of detail that we're able to see with it. Again, this was like 10, 10 minutes of imaging time. Uh, I'm sure that we, if we were to do extra post-processing on it on uh, programs like Pixinsight or uh, Photoshop or Lightroom, we would be able to get a lot more detail out of it. We're just going to run through a little bit of um, editing on here, you know, just to see how much we can pull out. So I'm just going to crop this, actually. Kind of get it more in the center. There you go. All right, save. Okay, adjustment. There we go. Let's bring out the brightness. Whoa, that's... Oh, wait, there we go. Uh, shadows. I lower that down. See if we can see a bit more detail, which we can. There is more detail now. It's a bit too much shadows, though. I'd rather not have shadows and have more contrast. I made it a little bit too red. Let's bring down the shadows a little bit more. Good. Okay. Go down here. Highlights. Bring them up. If we can we go we're gonna save this as a copy i mean like i said this is just like a very brief you know let's check it out type of thing see what we can do with it it does look very nice again i'm impressed by the amount of detail that sea star was able to pull out uh, i'm sure that with multiple sessions i'm sure you can imagine how much detail we would be able to see here imagine if we also use an h alpha filter uh mixed in with the solar filter how cool that would look maybe we'd be able to see the, the flares on the sides and things like that but as of right now we don't have that hopefully maybe if someone is listening and they will make some sort of filter like that that would be very much appreciated for this scope 
the fact that we were able to get this with such a small aperture, again, mind-blowing. Um, you wouldn't be able to see this with smaller telescopes. And even the professional uh, solar dedicated telescopes, um, come in comparison to the detail that they get, this is a very cheap you know, version, I guess you could say. The whole $500 is not really made for this. It's more made for astrophotography, not so much solar photography. For the, So the fact that the Sea star is able to do both uh, is quite impressive. Um, I mean, the detail on everything is just mind-blowing, in my opinion. So definitely would I say the Sea uh, star S50 is good for solar? Yeah, 100%. Especially if you're a beginner. This was my first time. No, second time, sorry. I did do a little run-through before this. Uh, this is my second time doing a solar photography and how easy it is just to use the Sea star how easy it is to actually do the post-processing, like, well, pre-processing, I guess we can say, since it was a pre-processor, to get the detail. I think that's awesome. So those of you who are also interested, I'm going to have the link in the description below to purchase the Z-Star if you are interested in buying it for solar photography or even just for astrophotography. Uh, I have other reviews as well, so you can see what it can do for that. Uh, but again, this is it's great. I love it. So I would 100%, 100% recommend this if you are interested in getting into solar photography or even lunar photography. Lunar, it's also very good for lunar as well. I'll do a video on that uh, eventually. Uh, but yeah, uh, once again, I do think this is a very, very good image. I'm very pleased with how it came out. Hopefully, if you guys get one in the future, you guys can get something like this or more than likely even better. So uh, please leave a like and subscribe if you can. Uh, honestly, it takes a lot of work to make these things, uh, to make it happen. You know, just I appreciate the support. Or if you want to make donations, there's always the super stickers or the membership uh, just to help out the channel. Because, again, this does take a lot of time. So uh, any help and support is appreciated. Uh, so, again, please leave a like and subscribe. And I wish you all clear skies so that you can also do some solar photography. Have a good night.